In many cases with MacDAWs and other software, it is necessary to create an aggregate device in order to be able to monitor the audio from the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus and all of the ports on your audio interface simultaneously. For this example, I have the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus connected to my Mac via USB port 2 and an iPad connected via USB port 1. I have also connected a MIDI keyboard from its MIDI out to the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus's in on MIDI DIN 1 to use as a controller on my iOS device. On our Mac, we will open our audio MIDI setup from our utilities menu. You will see a list of devices available for selection. The devices that appear in your list will reflect the audio devices connected to your computer and as such will probably be different. Don't be alarmed. To create an aggregate device, press the plus sign in the bottom corner of the window. You have the ability to assign this aggregate device a specific name if you so choose for future reference. The iConnect MIDI 2 Plus by default lists two inputs and two outputs. Using the iConnectivity iConfig application, you have the ability to configure up to four. Add the devices from the list that you want to use in your DAW. In my case, I will first select the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus, then my audio interface. Notice that my aggregate device is now showing six ins and six outs. This is the sum of available inputs and outputs based on the devices I have selected. The iConnect MIDI 2 Plus with two ins and two outs and my audio interface which has four inputs and outputs available. Also, by selecting the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus first, it has been set as my MIDI clock source. Before we proceed, let's ensure that our iOS app has recognized the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus and that it is sending and receiving MIDI to our device. This is usually accessed in an audio MIDI setup configuration menu. They may differ in appearance from app to app, but the functionality and terms are usually the same. For this example, we will be using Logic as our DAW. Some DAWs pre-configure the audio inputs and outputs automatically, while many do not. Please refer to your DAW's instructions if you are unclear how this is done. Here as you will see in Logic, we select Preferences, then Audio. Under the Devices tab, we have our core audio options. You'll want this enabled. We will select our aggregate devices, both our inputs and outputs. Here you have the ability to adjust the buffer length. Smaller buffer size means lower latency. Upon hearing crackles or if audio becomes distorted, you need to increase the buffer size. Apply your changes. Now we'll click on the Input Output Assignments tab. Here we can choose the physical output pair on which the stereo output is played. As it was set in my aggregate device, my external audio interface was the second in the list with four possible output channels. And I'm using the first two of those, so I'll select three, four. Now let's configure our audio track. If we remember how our aggregate device was set up, the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus was the first device on our list with two ins and two outs, so we'll select Stereo Input 1, 2. And for Output, we'll select the Stereo Out to my audio interface. Now let's add a MIDI track. On the right you see the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus and its available ports. I will select port 2.3. This is the default port which the iOS device in port 1 of the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus communicates to. Also by default, the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus's MIDI DIN 1 is routed to the USB port 1.1 which enables my keyboard to control my iOS app as well. Let's arm the tracks. Now, as we control the iOS app with the external MIDI keyboard, we can monitor and record the digital audio and MIDI data produced from our iOS device. 